This is the A to Z podcast, July 4th edition. We love America. We love you. We love ourselves. Zach Jackson, Andre bang, Knott. Bang, bang. <laughs> at Dre Knott, at Akron Jackson. Guys, one of our sponsors is American Fireworks. This is the time. They'll be out my way on Saturday doing the wonderful Portage Lakes Fireworks show, as they always are. But they want to sell you fireworks and sell you a bunch of them. Uh, the coupons, the specials are all on AmericanFireworks.com. And the store in Hudson is open until midnight, July 3rd wow. and July 4th. So go there, load up. And then party with caution. Good morning, Andre. Good afternoon, Zach. How are you? How are things there in beautiful Akron, Ohio? Uh, hot. It's hotter than water. freaking Jerusalem here. I can tell you that. Yeah. I'm sure it's the same in Kansas City. But uh, it's sticky. It's hot. But it's good. Um, I'm about vacationed out, you know, but everything's been good. Uh, people are in a good mood. As we record this, a lot of people's work weeks are ending. For some people, uh, you know, two weeks or at least two days. So hopefully everybody gets to enjoy some friends and family time. Uh, I know you got a couple of baseball games, and then you guys come back to Ohio, right? Yeah, we come back to Ohio, but not Ohio, Ohio. We go back to Kentucky, Ohio yes. for the weekend. <laughs> um, I'm in that. We're in the weird part of the schedule. I'm never one here to complain about our schedule because nobody cares uh, about because yeah, everybody's got their ups and downs. It's just weird. We had an off day here in Kansas City on Monday. Uh, we'll get to Cincinnati on Thursday evening tomorrow for basically. Uh, and then we'll have an off day in Cincinnati uh, on Friday. I can't tell you if I've ever been a part of a Friday or remember a Friday where there was no baseball to be played. Even has me debating whether I should come home for for all about 10 hours and come right. back, but I won't do that. So uh, weird part of the schedule. All-star break is almost here, which is cool, uh, but also blows me away that we're already halfway through a season. Base- I know it's weird. I'm at every game, but it's weird that the season's going this fast. Well, yeah, you just get so locked in, right? And you just like, right. there's no sense in counting them up or down, right? So, no, and I really don't, right? Yeah, yeah. No, in, in the Friday off day, I agree with you. A week ago or so, we talked on the phone, and I was like, say what? I've never heard of that, especially two days before the All-Star break. Whatever, those Kentuckians right. must have some sort of reason that they're doing it that way. Um, you're, you're, you won't complain. Your liver might, but you won't complain. Yeah, <laughs> my liver's screaming. <laughs> All right, so speaking of, I, I got to tell this story before we go on. We got some sports things to talk about. Some things might change. Um, I'm kind of, it's been such a weird week. I'm kind of expecting a 5 p.m. news dump of some sort here uh, right. on, on this Wednesday, July 3rd. But anyway, it was uh, yesterday, Dre. So I'm driving, needed to get some things, some White Claws specifically. Uh, <laughs> but I, I was like, in no hurry. I'm going to go to this giant eagle, right, and get these things, get it knocked out before we get in full holiday mode, okay? So right. I go through, I find the two things I need. I walk the walk the uh, aisles. I end up with five or six things. And this is not my normal giant eagle. So I come around the corner, and there right in front of me as I make the turn is the item, the line for 12 items or, or fewer, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So as you mm-hmm. know, I'm the world's least patient person, and I try to tell myself to not be that way. So even though I'm fourth or fifth in line, right, everybody only has three or four items, I'm going to stand in line. And mostly because of the self-checkout, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to get flagged for having the white claw. And even though I don't look 21, even though I look 51, I'm going to have to wait for <laughs> someone to come over, right, and, and scan it correctly. So I wait about two minutes and I don't move. And, of course, my typical Zach impatience kicks in. So there's a girl, uh, a giant eagle employee over there near the thing. I'm like, this is perfect. I go over and there's, you know, two self checkouts on one side and two on the other. Well, the two near ones are taken. So I go up to the one on the left, the far one. I scan my stuff. It takes all of about 45 seconds. I put the money in and I feel something. And I turn around and the woman behind me who had been, you know, in the self checkout behind me is picking up my cart. Picks it up, both hands, moves it about four feet. Not an excuse me, not a bump into me, not a little nudge to get out of the way. She picks it up and moves it. So I start laughing, like not uncontrollably, but pretty darn hard at the fact that this has gone on. Then, like, after two seconds, I process that this really happened. And she's, you know, we're not nose to nose, but we're like two feet away. And right. I'm laughing like, what, what are you doing? And she's just glaring at me, has not said a word. And I I stop laughing because I'm like, well, if she picked that card up, maybe she's gonna pick me up next. <laughs> so... <laughs> and again, like part of me felt like guilty, like 
maybe she can't speak, but like you could nudge the cart, right? Or you could right, like right. hit the cart and make a noise. And uh, maybe she's in a complete hurry, but that thought was erased when I got outside and I could see, like, by the time I left, she was still loading her groceries very patiently into her car. It was just the most bizarre thing. Like, the first 10 minutes of the drive home, I didn't have any music on. I didn't have any anything. I was like, I cannot believe that that really just happened. Like, what? This is what fucking bizarre world are we living in? (laughs) You got punked. You were in her way. It wasn't the Wadsworth giant angle, was it? No, it was not. It was not. It was the other All direction. Right. Yeah. All um, right. I'm just making sure. <laughs> I get strange looks there. <laughs> really strange. Really strange. And I just kind of been wanting to tell somebody that. So now I told a few dozen of our closest friends. It was just a really interesting experience. So anyway, yeah. I got the White Claw and I got home. And, um, you know, now we're off and racing. It's it's holiday weekend. Um, let's start with Kareem Hunt. Um yeah. This is wait, wait, yeah. Let's start there. Okay, so so this is touchy as it's been all along, and, and as I've said, I, I've completely understood from the start. If you have a hard line stance against or for Kareem Hunt, which you're not going to change, and whatever did or didn't happen last Saturday Sunday morning, whenever it officially was outside the Barley House, really only Kareem Hunt and a few eyewitnesses know it. Um, you know, given his track record, the Browns have to trust him, and I, I just want to s- say this. If the Browns Wait, don't 100%. Wait, repeat what you just said. Okay. Given repeat his track record. Said. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I kind of messed up. Given his track record, the Browns have to trust his his version of whatever events he gave them. Right? So I just want to say, without taking a side or without pretending I know anything about what happened, because even as I dove into text and this thing kind of unfolded on Sunday and Monday, I got different versions from, from different people because this is just how these things go. If you don't trust him. They just cut him right now because he's shown you we know what his track record is. We know what he's done. And yeah. you, you didn't ever have to do this. And this isn't about being, being right about that. That's just the facts that he keeps backing up. So if you don't 100% trust him, just do it now, July 3rd at 5 o'clock, July 4th, whenever, before training camp and move along because you can. this is the kind of shit that ends up making you look real silly. And right now, again, no facts, no details, no accusations, no police report. John Dorsey and Freddie Kitchens look real silly for saying, well, we trust Kareem. Kareem's changed. Oh, there's no problem with Kareem being in Cleveland. Why would, why would there be a problem with Kareem being in Cleveland? I don't know. There might be. Well, I just I, – I don't, I don't want to get – I don't want to get into the I told you so's. Um, I want – and I've said this when they signed them. Hell, I'm in Kansas City right now. And it's funny. I just walked by a store after I left the Negro League Museum, which we'll have to talk about. Um, and I saw Patrick Mahomes jerseys all, all over. You see Tyreek Hills, and I saw some Kareem Hunt, and I kind of chuckled to myself, um, just like how how quickly things change. When I was here a year ago, Kareem Hunt's jersey was the only jersey you saw everywhere, and I mean literally everywhere you went in Kansas City. What he was accused of, or what we saw from the TMZ video, it wasn't good. What we know has been attached to him when he goes out and about not good now you bring up the word trust or believe and i just don't see those words connecting to kareem hunt when half of his actions that got him in trouble happened over the last 12 months 18 months right correct multiple multiple incidents multiple multiple incidents where alcohol was involved i am not a person that can stand on top of the mountaintop and talk about people's decision making when drinking I drink myself. I like to go out. I like to have a good time. But I know when to say when. So using the word trust right now and Kareem Hunt in the same sentence, I just can't see. It takes a long time to overcome what you've overcome. We've had You and I have had these same discussions about a former wide receiver who just got his first Super Bowl ring. We can go back and forth on whether he was deserving of that ring, of all those other things. And we had half of Cleveland that hated how we responded when we talked about him, right? We brought up Josh Gordon's name, and it was just like people, like, they thought I was the meanest, worst person ever, and I'm not. Yeah, I believe in second chances. I believe in third chances. But I don't believe in them with people that haven't shown, because it always goes back to this. And you guys told me about this with Josh Gordon constantly. And it was, well, if Josh Gordon, Josh Gordon's going to get clean because he needs football. And I call bullshit on that. When you have issues with, and I'm not saying that Kareem Hunt has issues with alcohol, but obviously some bad decisions are happening when alcohol is involved or around. 
I think that's a fair thing to say with all the videos that we've seen with them. If we keep using football as what's going to make these guys, you know, be better human beings, then we're doing it all wrong. Like football obviously doesn't motivate Josh Gordon to be clean. It doesn't motivate uh, Kareem Hunt to not make bad decisions and put himself in bad situations. Because if it did, he would never be any, in, in, in any of these situations. So let's stop with that thought process. I don't know what Kareem Hunt has done or has not done, but he has shown us time after time he will put himself in bad situations. Now, look. Everybody will be excited if he clears his head, clears his mind. And look, I'll admit myself, I get excited talking about him as a football player, and I get excited thinking about what he can be for the Cleveland Browns on third down and the guys you can line up. But in reality, is this a guy that – and I said this when they signed him, and I'll stick with it. It pissed people off. And I said, for all those people that were doing their victory lap when he signed with the Browns, would they be doing that same victory lap if their daughter, sister, or best friend that's a girl came home with them? His history record says probably not. Yeah. And, you and, just got to be careful with them. The, listen, the history can't be ignored, right? Regardless of what the facts are or aren't from Saturday, the history can't be ignored. Um, let's right. go to another player. Five minutes before we started this podcast, the NFL announced that Ezekiel Elliott is not going to be suspended. He had another incident. He had another conversation with the commissioner. Uh, there's been times, there's been police reports, there's been accusations, there's been things. There's enough of a track record to say that Ezekiel Elliott acts like an idiot, Correct. Yeah, make okay. bad decisions. Yeah, okay. correct. Okay. There's enough of a track record of Kareem Hunt to say that alcohol and violence are things that he that, that nearly ruined his career and might. So what the hell is he doing last Saturday? I don't know. We don't know, right? He's doing, he's doing what Zeke did. I don't even think that was last Saturday. You're talking about Zeke? No, that I'm, talking about, like I'm talking about Kareem Hunt. You know, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I kind of – when the NFL – investigated these multiple and again multiple things and said he could play and the Haslam said he could play and they said all these glowing things I said all right well I don't need to high horse this because they've I trust that they've done their homework and 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 he and they say he can play but if this goes on then then he can't play and the Browns have wasted their time and they look really silly so again we can keep going in circles right um is right. a <laughs> bad look bad decision well, let me and, and there's like yeah, you mentioned you the guy you mentioned in Josh Gordon and the guy I mentioned in Ezekiel Elliott. Just history says the, these circles keep going right, rather than stopping. Right. Well, let me yeah. ask you this: What does Kareem Hunt have to do to get kicked off the team? Well, because and I don't know the rules, and I hate making the rules, and I don't want to be the rule maker. But I tell you what: If I put my neck on the line for you, Zach, and yep. you were and you were in a bar and trouble came from it. And, and I got any story that came back that you were in a bar again and there was a chance of something. And is this fair? No, it's not fair because we all know you can go to an establishment and some asshole can step on your Nikes and one of your boys can act stupid about it. And before you know, you have nothing to do with it, but you're in an incident. That happens. I totally get it. I've, we've all been involved in those types of incidents. But when your situation, your career, your livelihood is on the line, and I hate to be this guy, but I'm going to say it and close your ears, moms, because I'm going to say something that is exactly how I need to talk to, be talked to. What the fuck are you doing? What are you trying to accomplish? What is important to you, Kareem Hunt? What is important to you, Ezekiel Elliott? This is your opportunity. This is the only opportunity you'll have for the rest of your life. You can go to those stupid fucking bars until you're 60. Andre and Zach are well on their way to doing it. <laughs> but what are you, what are you accomplishing like going to, and no offense, Joe. You know I love you and everybody and Bobby George. But what are you getting out of going to the Barley House in 2019 when you have millions of dollars at stake? To me, that is someone you can't trust because I'm sorry, and I don't make all the best decisions in life. But if I have that at the cusp of my fingertips, I'm not ruining it hanging out with some dumbasses on East Ninth. Sorry. Well, it's not even about. Uh, we we all have made questionable decisions. We all have regrets and faults. You've never kicked a woman, right? Nah, that, that's nah. what makes it even worse. I mean, you just look. We we've laid it out there. We've laid it out there. To me, the Browns the Browns better Kareem better have spun an incredible one to the Browns, and they'd have to spin it four to be able to trust him or to be able to sell that they think about trusting him. I'm just saying because if you can, if you don't have that 100 percent trust, and from where I said I don't know how you can then it's time to just move on because it can only hurt the organization and this dream season you're trying to put together. It, it really, it only can. 
You took a flyer. Right. You stood up for the guy. You tried to. You said he was going to do the right things. <laughs> it re, it, right now, the Browns look really arrogant, and Cream Hunt looks really short sighted. Fair. Dang, stop making short jokes about him. It ain't his fault he's short. <laughs> I mean, just no. It's it, fair. It's fair. Yeah. And it's, yeah. you got, hey, we've talked about this for a long time. I don't care what team you own, if it's college, high school, or pros. If your best players make you not sleep at night because you're worried that you might get a phone call, is that player really worth it? Is, yep. all, is what I always go And that's how to. your seasons go real bad in a hurry, too. Little yes. things snowball. Yes. Right. I mean, what, what has Freddie said? Right. What has Freddie said publicly for six, seven months now and trying to tap the brakes? Of guys, yes, we're excited. Yes, we got good players. But we are not going to find a thing out about this team until we have some adversity. Right? Yes, sir. Well, why you yes, want to bring that shit on and just letting it come organically? It's going to come, right? It's coming, right. <laughs> like, Oh, it's going to come. And just, like you said, how they deal with it and how they go about dealing with it will, will tell you everything. You know, like at the end of the day, I don't know how they're going to deal with this situation. I'm not saying you should cut uh, Kareem Hunt now because of what happened this past weekend, but you better take a deep breath and look around and they better have a meeting in that room and ask themselves, are they willing to deal with this? For a guy that can't even play the first eight games of the season, you know, like what are we? What, you got to ask yourself, what are we doing? What are we willing to take on? What did we say for situation? five years about Josh Gordon? We asked, what's the trade off? What's it worth? Mm-hmm. Right, right. And Josh Gordon kept mm-hmm. showing each and every one of you, each and every one of us, what it was going to be, and it wasn't right. And mm-hmm. part of the reason the Browns, part of the reason the Browns are better today, guys, and yes. Odell Beckham and Baker Mayfield and Nick Chubb and Denzel Ward and all these guys have a lot to do with it. But I'm telling you, it's because Josh Gordon is not around. You have got to cut this shit out. You just do, frankly. Hey, is it fair for us to sit here and draw comparisons between the two? I don't know, especially if you talk about one incident last Saturday or Sunday morning in which nobody really seems to have the facts. I'll say no. However, Great. track records are track records, and this shit sinks ships, period. It does. It does. It, 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 and maybe this is why they haven't traded. The, and I, I won't even call him by his real name anymore. I just call him the, the all-time leading rusher of the University of Miami. Maybe that's why he's still here. Um, because as much as they're saying up front that they trust and believe in Kareem Hunt, their actions are saying that they don't truly trust him all the way, and they're willing to go through the public nightmare that you may go through if he can't stand up to the standards that they've asked them to. We'll see. Okay. Um, I believe, Drake, that this has been – our future? <laughs> that this has been a banner week for the NBA. I mean, I, oh, I just – Oh, my. I just think – yeah, I mean, the numbers, the contract numbers will are just eye-popping. And, you know, if your team or organization has been left outside the party, then I completely understand why you think otherwise. But not only do the contract numbers – Tell me that this is a happy, thriving league, um, a healthy, thriving league. I, I should I, I should say. Not only do the does the interest level, I just think the NBA obviously lets the tampering go on. I'm not sure how to stop it. Officially moves back the thing six hours in between Twitter, Reddit, burner accounts, real accounts, agent le- agents leaking <laughs> things, people trying to be heroes, guys signing contracts. Uh, things getting held on the wind, KD making his own, all of this stuff it, they have owned this week, right? And I just think that it shows a grasp on the modern um, news cycle, the modern society, and I, I just think um, that it has been great for the league. You know, I'm not sure to those that work in the league would say it's great that 40% of the league was free agents this week. Uh, obviously, history and just – common sense say a lot of these contracts are going to go bad because holy shit are some of them ridiculous but i i just think today's nba i don't love every aspect of it Trey. um some of that's the cranky old white man in me some of that's the basketball purist in me but i just think it's been a banner time and i think the nba is healthy and thriving and uh, i'm frankly enthralled by the drama well let me say this um the nba is doing what's best for the nba would you agree with that sure sure I mean, it's, it, it's, the season's been over for, what, less than a month? And it's found its way. Like, baseball and, ba- and football, for whatever reason, have always been national treasures because they have found a way to be a part of our lexicon even when the season isn't being played, correct? Correct. 
base, baseball's always had the hot stove. The hot stove has gone away, and we talked about that during the baseball offseason, how there was no movement. But that's how baseball became baseball. We've always talked about how football has found a way that the Super Bowl can be played in that early, you know, late January, early February, uh, but then you have the combine in late February. You have uh, the, the Shrine game. Then you have the draft. Uh, then you have, uh, you know, you have two, you don't even have, before you even get to mini, you got mini camps. You got, they have found a way to make a splash in the newspaper or on Twitter or wherever else. Basketball has finally found its way. Um, the contracts are ridiculous. When you say 40%, 40-some-percent, sure. I mean, in any contest, if you think about it, how many of those contracts are going to be, any, if it was only 10% free agency, I'd say only 5% of those contracts would be worthy. I no longer get caught up in the, money, the amount of money. The amount of money is just in a region and in a district that doesn't even make sense to me. So why even get caught up in it? These teams obviously have it. Um, I love that it kind of – I mean, now, is it because of the injuries with the Golden State Warriors or is it just because of the movement? But I kind of like that the NBA is wide open. I kind of like that you still have Lakers fans you know, praying to God that Kawhi is on his way. And whether he is or whether he isn't, uh, I like where this is at. I, you know, I like, I like what Philadelphia has done. Is Philadelphia the perfect team? Did they lose some things? No. Uh, but there's, I, I just like how wide open this is. I don't know if Kimba and Boston uh, makes that much of a difference, but they had to do that. I like that they're kind of going with their young guys. Uh, in Boston, they basically tried. and They're like, you know what? We might as well go with our you get young guys. The whole Kyrie situation makes me chuckle, um, considering what he put Cleveland through. And the true jackassness of himself just shows up again and how odd and how weird he is as a person. Um, I think the NBA, I think the NBA is in a great place. Is a game in a great place? I don't know. Uh, but this first week of free agency and how they finally kind of figured out how to do free agency to me, Zach, um, it should be assigned to the rest of the leagues of this is how you do it in 2019. Uh, because they have, I mean, even at this point, I looked at Twitter as I glanced at Twitter two seconds before we started this podcast, and there was a video of Kawhi Leonard driving yes. down a highway, I believe, in L.A., and they had, like, the O.J. chopper over Toronto. Top of them. It's and in Toronto. It, it, yeah. it's a, okay, that's yeah. in Canada? Let's see, I just didn't walk back, and I saw it. But think about um, just how ridiculous yeah. that is. <laughs> uh, and, and, it causes, and it catches all of our attention. Yes. No, I, I agree with, with pretty much everything you said there, and, and, and I like that, too. And that's not Kawhi's style. Uh, I really don't believe that Kawhi set out and said, I'm going to be the last domino to drop. I believe that Kawhi said, hey, I've had a hell of a month here. Like, I'm in no hurry. Let's let's let this thing play out, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explore my right. options. I'm going to think about this. Obviously, had a great year in Toronto. Uh, it's been a hell of an 18 months for him, really. His whole world has been turned upside down. Then he won an NBA title. Then he achieved the yeah, free agency right. that he'd known is coming. Uh, he watched all these things, you know, shake down, knowing he could go to – to anywhere um you know reportedly picking three spots but nobody really knows because nothing is leaked right because um, he don't talk right yeah and look I, I think the stuff that's leaked about lebron's pitch to him being hey you know i'm i'm on the back end here and and i'm gonna pass the torch to you i think all of that How makes perfect that? sense you know um mm-hmm. i don't know what it means to Kawhi. on on one hand dre i i don't think Kawhi's personality tells us that he would want to go where AD and LeBron are the stars, right? Like he's he's become an alpha in his own way without having his own out front extra right. everything. You know, he's, right. he's he's proven that he's one of the best players in the league. He just won a title. Is clearly the best player for a team that had never gotten there. However, let I me think, ask you a question. Okay, but let me let me finish this thought. The okay. flip side of that is I think you're naive to believe that, that guys don't want to play with other places, that guys don't want to play in L.A., especially with Kawhi being from there. Uh, you know, so you could say it'd be puzzling if he picked the Lakers. You could say, well, of course he picked the Lakers. Um, that That's what makes this great. I, I just think the whole thing has been um, – I, I think Kawhi has earned this right, and it, it is interesting. I, I don't think the Lakers have any shot to win the title if they don't get him because they're going to have Kyle Kuzma, who we don't re- still really know what he is. We're going to have LeBron in his age 35 year. We're going to have Anthony Davis, and we're going to have a bunch of fucking bums around them if they don't get caught. Yeah, well, right? that, that, yeah that, I mean, that's part of the problem that they have when they sit around and wait. But let me go back to this question. This is why I wasn't trying to cut you off. I just got to get yeah. the question in. Kawhi, and you talk about his last 18 months. The reason why I think there's a chance for him to go to the Lakers, 
Think about what his situation was in the NBA when he came into the NBA. No, it wasn't the super teams that we look think of with, you know, Dwayne Wade's and LeBron's teaming up or, uh, you know, or when Boston got their big three of Pierce and all those guys put together. He basically played on a super team that he was drafted onto. He played with the San Antonio Spurs, and I know they do things differently, and I know this is weird for some people to hear. I just don't think it's completely out of character for Kawhi to say this may be the closest thing I had to coming into the league where I was, a, a, I was an important part, a big part, of the team, but I also had a guy like Tim Duncan. We had Parker. We had Ginobili. It wouldn't be like this is the first time he would place himself upon a team where everything wouldn't be anchored upon him playing every single night and carrying a team. Yes, he's an alpha male, and he became an alpha male in that setting. I just think the setting that he came up in may play into the decision-making. It's easy for us to say, yes, you're, you're the alpha male. We, we can build this team around you. I think that sounds great but I don't think he's a typical superstar that needs that pitch to get him going. I hear what you're saying, but I also think his world was so different eight years ago too, right? I mean, we're talking about the number 15 pick, oh, no the kid out of San Diego State, you know? Um, right. And, and now he is a top player in the league. And I just think LeBron is, because we've talked about this for months, LeBron is so extra. Now LeBron is still LeBron. LeBron has been awesome. He has magical powers, and I fully expect a bounce back year out of LeBron. Uh, but – you know, those are the two guys that the Lakers are out front with, right? Those are the two guys that have been in the headlines for various reasons for, well, AD for going on six months now and LeBron for, um, with, you know, going back to when Kawhi was in middle school, right? So right. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I, I'm not going to be naive and say it just doesn't fit. I, I told you, I don't believe it'd be good for the NBA if Kawhi leaves Toronto. Uh, we went over that in the last podcast. Yeah. But, I, again <laughs> – I'm not going to be surprised how it ends up. And, and I think, you know, all of these guys now, I think the whole thing that I left out when we initially shifted to this is, yes, these guys want the guaranteed money. And when you see four years, 135, four years, 160, whatever, I mean, that's just insane. But it's like it it behooves these guys to bet on themselves and get back to free agency because this thing's been so good and so lucrative that it's not going to slow down, right? Eventually there'll be a, ba- a baseball year where it tips yeah. maybe but like for these guys that are in their 20s like why not get back in this market in two three years or one if you're absolutely Kawhi, one, you know absolutely yeah no because yeah, there's somebody who's gonna find a way to pay you one way or the other and there's always the knicks and i always laugh at this you can keep saying it i'm not saying you're wrong but you talk about a bounce back year for lebron god damn i would love to have a bounce back i would love to have his down year well he sure. still average 28 7 and 7 right like he's still yeah average numbers that we haven't even seen before and i'm not i'm not putting you down for it i get what you're saying but that's a down year it's amazing that that's how that's the context that we put him in and it's probably because all the drama that comes along with lebron that you don't even we don't even put in the context he puts he put up all the fame numbers last year despite playing with a bunch of bums and playing on one leg probably 40 games with right, last year. right yeah no no he did that in the context of voluntarily stepping away from one of the most impressive streaks in sports history of eight straight nba finals but yes he did that no doubt and he is still really freaking good and really unique and you know we'll see what the back end of his career entails here but he could be the starting point guard for the lakers he could be the starting three for the lakers he could be you know, he might have to score 30 for the Lakers. He, he could be right. facilitator for the Kawhi and Davis Lakers. You know, we'll see what happens. He can do it all. I mean, uh, do you really think he's willing to take a backseat to Kawhi and AD? Uh, do you really think? I, I, think I mean, in I know a way it's being put is. out there, but do you believe it? I, I, th- I, think, I think in the boardroom, Dre, I think in the back room where these meetings are being held, LeBron on his text messages, LeBron with his closest confidants, LeBron actually talking to. Do these guys assuming he he has you know we don't none of this know if this went down via Skype via in person via text whatever yes right. in December January February March April specifically I don't know That'd but I, I I think I think he conceptually he's willing to yes I do right okay I I think so too I just think it's it's easy to say it's gonna be hard for him to do I just don't it's not it's not a part of what his life has been like now he did do it with Miami for a little bit. He, you know, in, in ways he did it with Kyrie, um, I guess. You know, he tried with Kyrie. I just think it's going to be difficult because that's – he's been the, the, the alpha dog his whole entire life. You know, for 20-plus years, it's been the team, the, the area, the whole world goes how LeBron goes, right? 
No doubt. It'll be kind of hard all of a sudden to just show up at the, at the at the at the park and just be like, "All right, Brian, go ahead. You go over there on on the, on the box, and we're gonna let Kai. We're gonna let you know Kawhi and, and AD run the pick and roll, and you just go on the on the, on the opposite side." I just don't see LeBron just going. Yeah, that's a good idea, coach. Oh, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> However, all of us, even him, gets humbled, and you got to think this April, May, and June were real humbling. <laughs> Watch, no doubt. Watching oh, yeah. this no, on no TV. Doubt. You're right. You know. Isn't it amazing that's what it took, though? Isn't it amazing that that's where it took to get him to, to, to have some realization of the, one of the things that's undefeated in life? And somehow he's overcome the other thing that's undefeated in life, but he ain't overcome the number one guy. And I don't know how he's overcome number two. <laughs> um, I think this, I, <laughs> but we all know number one is going to get his ass. And, he, and I think he understands that. So maybe he is willing. But I can't believe it until I see it, Bron Bron. Until I see it, I don't get it. Um, I gotta, I gotta bring this up because this has been hard for me. Um, I don't have anything that, I don't have anything that touches on Tyler Skaggs. I never met him. Uh, I, I talked about him and reported on him uh, when we played the Angels. Um, but the situation and him passing away is difficult. For me, and I think just because when you travel the way that we that I travel for my job, uh, until A to Z becomes the rock the rock that keeps me home and pays me enough money that, that I can take care of my kids, um, you know, traveling with a baseball team is is it's it's like it's cool. it's the craziest best thing ever. Um, you know, it's like a dream come true to be able to go from town to town, see things that I've never seen before, go to stadiums that I w- I wished of and dreamed of as a kid at home that I would get to see when I was playing video games. Um, that stuff is really cool. That part, that's the outside part that no one sees. Um, being on the bus trip, being on the bus when you land at the airport and, and us laughing and talking and making fun of each other, or Sandy Alomar jumping on top of me, screaming while I'm on the phone with my dad. Um, I've got memories I'll never forget. But there's also quiet times when you do get to hotels or when you do have these long trips and you get a tad lonely or, you know, for whatever reason, because you're not around your family. Like this, this is a tough week to be honest for, for me because it's the 4th of July. And I think I said in our last podcast, the week of the 4th of July was always in the black community. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's always a big holiday in the not family. Um, and so it sucks that I don't get around my family and, and with fireworks, make sure you get your fireworks from the best place. They're open until midnight. He, Jack told you earlier, we always want to take care of, of our place. Um, and we'll keep continue telling you that, but, um, it's hard. So I know over the next 24, 48 hours, I'll have a ton of texts from family. Uh, my wife will send me a ton of pictures of my kids playing and, and pools and things of that nature. So you have a lot of downtime to think to yourself. And there's a hotel that we stay in in Chicago um, where Daryl Powell passed away when he was with the St. Louis Cardinals. And you always like, and, and like, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm all over with this story because it's, it's emotionally hard when you hear about a major league baseball player dying on the road. It doesn't happen often, but it touches home because this is the lifestyle that we live. And you do kind of check up on each other in weird ways. Like I always take the second bus. A lot of the guys I work with always take the first bus. And we'll always make a joke on a second bus. If somebody's not there, they're like, oh, they're sick. They missed, like, I missed my first bus a couple of weeks ago. I don't even know why I'm telling this on a podcast because it was hilarious because everybody killed me for it. But the only the other crazy thing about it was how many texts and phone calls I got from different people I work with and players when I missed that bus, and that was their way and their in, in our very masculine way of being like, hey, are you okay? You know what I mean? Because you know, as guys, Zach, we don't just go out of our way to be like, hey, man, did you wake up? You breathing? Like we don't. You know what I mean? Like we don't do that. But as soon as you don't make the bus, everybody kind of freaks out and like, hey. What's going on? You know, you cool? You good? Like, sometimes you don't text people back at night. You don't go where they're going at night. You go out with somebody else. But during the day, the, when you get on the bus, that's the, how our days start. So, knowing that freaked out earlier this week when they were in Texas, not because they didn't know – not at the, the thought that Tyler Skaggs was no longer with us, but he always rode the first bus. Yeah. And, like, the stories I've gotten is that when he didn't get on that first bus – that was a telltale sign to his teammates of all right, something's up with Skaggs. You know what I mean? Like that, like right. he's always on the first bus. Um, it's the nightmare, man. Cause like, you know, nobody, nobody wants to pass away in a hotel, number one, but nobody wants to have to call your wife, your mom, your kids. Nobody wants to go that way. 
And my heart just goes out to him, man. And we, and it's easy for everybody to say, oh, you know, go to the ballpark. You know, everything, you know, that'll go away. No, it won't. I can tell you Adam Pletko, who's known, knew Tyler Skaz since they were 14 years old. He told the story. We showed it on the air last night. Um, how Skaggs was wearing 40, 40, he had the number 45. And if you know the Jay-Z rap, he talked about being like MJ coming back wearing 4-5. It's a classic, it's a classic rap lyric. And it's basically if you're a Jordan fan or if you're that age group, we all know that when Jordan came back from his first retirement, he came back, wore the number 4-5 and so on. They sold shoes. Well, Tyler Skaggs, to, to hype up people, because he, he had that number, he would say, I'm coming back like Jordan wearing the 4-5. So when Adam Pletko got to the major leagues, he walks in and the number they gave him was four or five. One of the first text messages he got was from Tyler Skaggs saying, all right, you're going to rock it too. Um, it's a weird fraternity. There's only 700 and some players. There's a bunch of weirdos like me that travel around these guys. Um, and it makes it hard, man, because, uh, you know, I just left in that, the Negro League Baseball Museum. And, it, you know, when they talked about their travel and how they had to travel and get along, like, Look, these guys are some of my best friends throughout the season because there's nobody else around us. And to yeah. see some of these major league ball players, these millionaires, they're crushed by this, man. I don't know if you got a chance to watch the Angels post game Tuesday night after their win in Texas. Uh, I mean, when you watch Mike Trout cry like a baby, and I'm not making fun of them, and you watch their entire team cry like a baby, this is tough, man. And it doesn't, it's just, it's really tough. At 27 years old, um, we're not supposed to be talking about a guy like this. So my thoughts, prayers, and all that stuff goes out uh, to Tyler Skaggs. I don't know how the Angels are going to go the rest of the season because um, it's just tough. They moved, they left the hotel they were staying in um, because everything they thought of was about their teammate who had passed away in that hotel. Yeah, it's just an awful story. I remember seeing the tweets on Monday evening like, wow. Um, again, I didn't know him either, N- you know, knew the name, um, knew he was highly regarded in their organization and yeah just a just a terrible thing and um yeah imagine the emotions in the coming not just this week but in the coming weeks as that team kind of reconciles that it it is i think you did a wonderful job there of kind of painting the picture of of what but it's how like do you? the question you know? is and like even yeah. all right, i'll give you a quick story so so like how do you overcome this but like last night because here in kansas city uh we get matt underwood rick Manning, they get a they get a rental car, right? And they get the rental car because just taking a bus home after games can be. It's just we're about fifteen minutes, twenty minutes from the ballpark here. So last night, Matt and I are out, you know, uh, getting ready for today's game, talking things over. And because of this, and Matt's going in early to do some work today, and I was going to the Negro, Negro League Museum today, and I knew I was going to do the podcast. I texted Rick Manning last night, and I was like, "Hey, man." Uh, you know, Matt's leaving. And I only did this because of the Skag situation. And you don't want to, like, I'll admit, it's already touched, touched and touching home for us because I'm texting Rick last night, like, hey, um, you know, late bus is at this time tomorrow, early bus is at this time tomorrow. I'm taking the late bus because I'm doing this, this, and this. Matt won't be here with the rental car. And he, like, laughed. He was like, thanks, Dad, for breaking it all down. And I was just <laughs> like, I just don't want to leave you left out. You know, like, because yeah. usually we're kind of like, you're on your own, asshole. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> But now we're all like, hey, man, this is what I'm going to do. This is where he's going to be. Um, it's just it, – it touches home, man, because the last thing you think about – look, I'm, I'm following a kid's game every day. You know how lucky I am yeah. to sit around and, and do this for a living. Um, but you never just think about death being a part of it because you're, one, you're around a bunch of in-shape young guys that, let's be honest, death – you know, they – I mean, I, I mess with Frankie Lindor constantly. And I enjoy him, as the owner told us, and there's some jackass will say as soon as they hear it, so I'll beat you to it. My favorite parts of being around Frankie aren't at 7 o'clock uh, when, we, when the game starts. We just have conversations that I love having with a young guy that just doesn't that, – that loves life. He's talented as shit. He knows he's talented as shit. <laughs> uh, he enjoys being talented as shit. But we just talk life. And we just talk about the difference in ages and how I finally got, I finally have broken through to Frankie to see that as you get older, shit changes, how your body feels, how people look at you, how you look at people. And he just admitted to me like two weeks ago, he's like, all right, Dre, maybe I am starting to get old. Uh, it's, that's the fascinating part of my, of my job. And those are the stories that like, they don't make it on the game, but as people, I'm watching these guys grow up. I'm watching guys, get married. I'm watching guys have their kids for the first time. I'm watching guys 
break up with their girlfriends or break up with their wives. Um, it's just, it's, I'm watching these guys grow up and death is never a part of that process in your mind. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, I think we've spent the last 30 minutes talking about young guys who got the world by the balls in some form or fashion. Right. Right. And, right. Um, you know, the careers end for everybody. The, the time in the spotlight ends, you know, for most people, for most that the humongous paychecks that we can't even fathom end, but yeah, I mean that, that that's real. There are real bonds made in in every locker room on every level, uh, even the ones where we where the guys are making this outrageous amount of money, and just seeming to live their lives on TV and nowhere else. And that's crazy. And you've been really good. Um, holy shit, really good. Explaining some things the last ten minutes. No, no, I mean it. So like, I, I, I am sorry because I feel like I'm. I'm being honest. I feel like I'm rambling. So I apologize. No, it, but it was. I'm, I'm no, listen to that that Pluto story, especially. Um, <laughs> wow, like, I don't even got any right. congrats. I don't right. got any congrats. Congrats. Now, part of this is I got a lot of hot dogs to eat these next three, four days. But <laughs> <laughs> that hey, was Peter, real. Hey, Peter, kid, <laughs> be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, well, the thing, <laughs> the thing we always tell people though is that oh, you can just forget about it when you go to work, you know. And that's what we kind of tell the ball players. Well, when you get between those lines, like like last night. Um, Trevor Bauer sent it to me after a game. He goes, yeah, because he knew he was drafted in the same class as the guy with the Arizona Diamondbacks. He knew Tyler Skaggs. They worked out together. And he goes, yeah, everybody tells you when you get between the lines, you just forget about it. He goes, well, shit. I got between the lines and the life started racing on me because how can I not think of them? And I think every baseball player, because the one thing is, and there's a word that I, I, I can't think that's not coming to me, but when you don't, like, like everything has worked for these guys. You know what I mean? Like physically, like they're, they're the 1%. So the one percent doesn't think that they could just, you know, we'll go into their hotel room and, and go to sleep and die, and never wake up again. Yeah. So when that vulnerability comes to light, um, it, it it throws everyone for a loop. It really does. It really does. Um, thank you to Scene, to the Honeymoon Grill, to American Fireworks. Thanks to you guys for helping this thing grow. Uh, Dre, we'll have to figure out your All Star schedule because I know it's the All Star break, but you're still working. Um, probably see and do some cool things so let's see there uh as far yeah. as do, doing the podcast uh a to z podcast.com facebook.com slash a to z podcast thank you to you guys i hope everybody gets to chill out drink some white claws spend some time with the family and really everybody except that lady that moved my car to giant eagle i hope you have a wonderful <laughs> fourth of july <laughs> <laughs> you. shout out to american fireworks thank you so much for being a part of the a to z podcast we appreciate you guys. I give a congrats to Peter King for his tweet last night about the 30 for 30 and Joey Chestnut needing hot dogs. If you didn't see it, go read it. Happens to the best of us. It's a great learning lesson for the, for the old generation on Twitter. Stop bitching and barking and yelling at everything that goes by you. Hey, you end up looking like an asshole if you don't know what you're talking about. Th this week specifically, there's been some lessons for the younger generation too, guys. Sometimes yeah. just step away from the Twitter machine. Kanichiwa. Yes. We'll see you next week on A to Z. Kanichiwa. Happy Fourth of July. Bang bang. Don't nobody get like uh Asi or who was the who's the uh the, the defensive end that played formerly of the Giants and blew his hand off? Oh, JPP. Yeah. Yeah, don't JPP yourself, y'all. Let somebody do that with it. <laughs> Let somebody that knows how to do that. Don't JPP yourself. <laughs> I'm, I'm not making fun of him. But you want your fingers. You need them. All all eight of them. Here's and Andre you bringing you to tears. Here's Andre. Don't JPP yourself, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, I'm a man of many, of many, many different subjects. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have fun sweating your ass hey, off in man. the dugout tonight. I'll talk to you later. All right, brother. Y'all be good. Later.